Hello and welcome to nearly halfway through our first ever worldwide online Vectric user group meeting. What a great day and a half it's been so far and um, we've had all kinds of great presentations, lots of great information to share. I hope you've been able to take in some of the previous presentations that we've had. If you haven't, they're still available for you to see. So after this one, I want you to take a look around or maybe later on today or maybe tomorrow or Sunday even have a look. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them in the comments and the speaker will get back to you as soon as they can with an answer, okay? Anyway, again, thank you so much. Well, just before us, you saw Jay from JTAC Lasers um, do a wonderful hybrid laser project uh, for the car enthusiasts out there. So if you missed that, then you might want to go back and see that. He shows some great tips on how to make a nice plaque. Um, so as usual, what I normally do about now is I say that uh, I've got kids at home because we're working at home, my wife's at home, the uh, train might go out back, but really Mother Nature is my biggest problem today. Um, I thought it might rain, but it's really, really windy. So if it gets a little windy out there, I really do apologize. If you see anything fly by the windows, that's just for comic effect. I'd... Anyway, I'm sorry about that. Not much I can do about that, but uh, anyway, so... Today, what we're going to do is I am going to show you something that is very dear to my heart. Um, I love doing this as part of what I do, and I think I do, I'm do. i fairly good at it. So I'd like to share, though, more importantly, some of my tips and tricks that I've developed over the years to help people out there that are either have never taken the step into 3D modeling, or maybe are in there just dipping their toe in and not quite sure what to do, or maybe even some of the, the more experienced modelers out there that might want a little bit of a hand trying to figure out a few things. So anyway, let's get right into this. There's a lot to pack in here, so I'm hoping that uh, we won't go over time. So as Rebecca mentioned today, by the way, um, we were supposed to be earlier this year at a Maker Central, but like a lot of things in our world today, they've been postponed until next year, unfortunately. And Maker Central is, is actually held just down the road from the office in Birmingham. And uh, it was going to be a group of lots of different makers getting together to share ideas and so on. Um, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. It will happen next year, we hope. So that's great. But we had already up the run up to that, being prepared like we are, we had some projects already ready to go. So we were supposed to have uh, Rebecca or Becky, me, and then Tim Sway present some projects. Um, Tim Sway, you would have seen probably one of our free projects that he has given away is a little lamp that he made with some animals on it, some safari animals. Rebecca this morning did a fantastic um, presentation on, on her huge giraffe and uh, rhinoceros slot together projects. Of course, she's the queen of slot together stuff. So if you're interested in that, you better go check that out because it's really good. And um, I had to come up with something. So my thought was, or our thought was, to come up with a, a 3D head that we could mount on the wall that we could show not only slicing, uh, but 3D modeling, and, and come up with something really unique. Now, the interesting thing about this is that um, it would be more of a hybrid 3D model. So in Aspire, you're more or less used to uh, modeling bas relief or low relief models. And this had to be not only substantially big this way, but also had to be quite thick in the end. And so that was going to require some 3D modeling stuff in there as well. So some proper 3D stuff, it had to be quite thick. Um, so using some of the techniques that I kind of mix and matched, we could actually come up with this, the size model that we needed. Now, what we were going to actually going to model, we weren't quite sure, but we thought, why not a gorilla? Well, of course the, uh, the gorilla said, uh, you know, what, why me? And well, there's lots of reasons why I thought a gorilla would be really good. One is that we don't see gorillas very often. So unlike a human face, which would have been fun to model, but you would see instantly any kind of problems because we're always looking at other humans' faces. So if something went wrong or amiss, then that wouldn't be so great. Also, a, a gorilla is pretty close to that. So some of the things I could show would actually get you going down the road of being able to model a human face pretty pretty good or pretty well. Um, also, a gorilla's face, there's some pretty clearly defined areas that we could actually pick and choose what to model and what not to. So it seemed like a really good, or he seemed like a really good option. So what we did is I had to go out like we always do and find some really good reference. And the internet is full of gorilla pictures. But I needed a very special one. I wanted one that had very easily defined shapes. Now these do have that, 
but they were kind of covered up with hair. And, and unfortunately, that was hard to tell where things kind of connected and how they worked together. And I really didn't want to rely on any kind of texture. I knew that we were going to need to slice this thing up. And I didn't want to have to reestablish that hair after I was all done putting it together and filling it all and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted it to be relatively smooth and, and, and look quite nice. And also, I needed to fit the end use. So I wanted a straight on picture, something that I could model that was going to be pretty uh, symmetrical from left to right, which would be great. So I went out and we found this particular model. Sorry, wrong button, wrong button again, right there. This model right here. Not only does it resemble me lack of hair, but also it's a, you can see the clearly defined shapes that are there. So that was really good. But we also needed to have a, uh, a side profile. So this little fellow here will stand in perfectly for his double. Um, so we can take a look and see how things look on the side. Now, these are only for reference only, okay? Um, I don't, the object is not to model a perfect example of the gorilla. That's not it at all. It's to show you how to get to a resemblance of it. And also, um, I didn't want, we can't give these away. I guess what I'm going to say, we can't give these images away. Originally, when I did this project, uh, I found these on a free site. And then after digging a little bit farther, after I had already done it, they're mixed, they're all over the internet on free sites, on pay sites, and so on. So we can't give them away. So we're just going to use them for reference. And we're just going to use them just so we can get something that resembles a gorilla in the end, I hope. So here's a little video that I did, this high quality animation here of uh, me circling the parts of the gorilla. So the nose and the cheeks, his eyes are obviously easily defined. The front of his head, his ears, obviously, they're not covered with hair, so we can see what they look like. The back of his head, where everything kind of sits on top of. And then we have his muscles and his chest, which you can see because again, they're not covered with hair and I have a good idea about how to make those shapes. So I get asked quite often when I'm doing a project like this, what is my office set up like and what are my tools? Well, this demonstration, of course, is gonna be done all in Aspire because you can't do 3D modeling in a VCarve Desktop Pro, Cut2D Desktop or Pro. So we need to use Aspire, so you have to have that. But don't be scared if you've got a VCarve Pro or VCarve Desktop or, Cut2D or any of our products, um, because what you're going to learn here just might push you over the edge to get the confidence to maybe try a bit of 3D modeling on your own, okay? And you can download the trial, right? And give them a shot, see if you can do a little modeling. Anyway, there you go. Um, and this is my setup here in my house uh, at the current remote location. Um, right in front of me is my uh, laptop where I do most of my vector drawing and so on and some of my sculpting if I'm using my mouse. I've got off to my right hand side here a larger monitor in the background which currently right now has one picture of a gorilla but you can see in the picture that's where I put all of my reference images if I needed to. Right in front of that is my Wacom tablet and we're going to get to that in just a second for helping me sculpt but most importantly I have a set of headphones and a great cup of coffee to get me through because these sometimes can take a while to do. So my tablet my current tablet that I have right now is a 16-inch Cintiq tablet from Wacom or Wacom. I'm not sure how you say it. Um, I'm, I'm privileged to have this. It's a nice piece of kit, but it's not really what you need if you want to sculpt. It's, you don't need this in order to sculpt well, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I've gone through two or three of the smaller Wacom tablets. Um, just worn them out because I used them so much, not because they broke. They just got worn out. Um, and also I've used one of the really small ones you can get on Amazon for like 30 pounds or I don't know, I think it was like 25 pounds or $35 American. Um, and it worked really well. The only thing, the only criticism with that was, um, it had the batteries in the pen. So I didn't really like that at all, but still it worked. Now saying all that, I know some really accomplished modelers that use just their mouse. And so don't get it in your head that you have to have a tablet in order to do a good job um, sculpting or modeling and aspire. You can do it with your mouse, a little bit of practice, and off you go. The tablets are just a little bit more natural, that's all. Okay, so let's get right into aspire. Like I said, this is going to be a while, and I'm not, I'm not going to um, pretend that sculpting and modeling is easy. It took me literally eight plus hours to 
find images to create really good vectors to do create the models and then also to sculpt that together to come up with what I did in the end so to be honest with you I, I don't want I don't want you to think that this is just going to be an easy run. We've got 45 minutes or now we only have maybe 30 minutes left or 35 minutes left to do this. So I'm going to pick and choose some of the really good things that you need to know and then send you on your way. But one thing I do want to mention is that it only to make this gorilla that I'm going to show you and it only takes about three different objects or ideas of how to build shapes. And uh, I think you'd be quite surprised at what you can do in the end. So. I'm going to show you my process. This by no means is everybody else's process. This is my process that I, that I do. Um, sculpting and modeling is something that you kind of learn your own system for. So this is my system. So hopefully you'll take up some pointers from it. Anyway, we're going to create a brand new file. Of course, this is a single-sided job, not a double-sided job. Um, the job size, the only things that matter when you're modeling or when I model is just the width and the height. The thickness of the material doesn't matter because we're not talking material. I'm just creating a 3D model. I'm not going to use this file to cut it with. I'm just going to be modeling in it, okay? I don't need to worry about the zero position where I'm going to zero off the, the material. Right now, that doesn't matter to me. Um, where the datum is, that might matter to you depending on where you want objects to kind of appear if you're going to create them, but uh, especially vectors and so on. But I, I'm not going to worry about that. It's going to be dead in the center. You're going to want to use a very high resolution. Now, earlier yesterday, uh, Michael Tyler showed you his... Um, his tooth that he made, the Megalodon tooth, and uh, he went even higher than this. I personally, for this job, because I know the end result, I don't need to add any extra detail. I'm gonna use some pretty big cutters on the machine to cut this with. So any extra detail is just gonna get blown away. And then also with the assembly, uh, those, those little details may or may not survive, so I'm not gonna waste my time. My other top tip is when you're choosing your appearance or your material for your 3D model, Choose a solid color. Don't, don't choose the um, anything with a grain in it, like a wood, because the grain will sometimes cover up little imperfections that you're going to want to work out. So definitely choose a solid color. I'm going to use tan just from the default palette to start us off with, and so that should do the trick. We're just going to click OK. The first thing we're going to need is going to, we're going to need our bitmaps. So we're going to import in our bitmap the front of our gorilla. Open that up. Zoom out a little bit, and we're going to hold down our shift key once we've selected the gorilla, and we're going to size it up. We want his head to be as big as the job space, but you can see my first problem. I can't see my job space anymore, so I have no idea if his head, because it's not in the center of the, the, the bitmap, whether it's in the center of my job space. So my fix for that is to select the gorilla, slide him out of the way, and I'm going to make sure that I have turned on my toggle geometry snapping, and I'm going to draw a box from one corner to the other, and then let go press apply and close, and then drag back on my gorilla. And as soon as I do that, you'll see that that box is proud of my bitmap. And now I can see where exactly he is. And I can just kind of plunk him in there where I want him to be. I can use my cursor keys to move it around a little bit. I think it looks fine right there for now. I want to make sure that his, his chin hair, his goatee is in there, which is nice. The top of his head is still in there. That's good. Right now, I'm just concentrating on drawing the vectors for his head. I'll take those vectors and then I'll bring them into the um, to my next setup and put the rest of his body parts on, which you'll see in a minute. You won't see me doing that, but you'll see the result of that. Now what I want to do is I want to crop this down. I don't need the rest of the information. So we're going to select the box, hold down my shift key, select the bitmap. And one of the great new features of version 10 is that we can crop a bitmap. If we have a closed object and a bitmap selected, we can just crop that. And bang, we got it made. The next problem we have is that our bitmap is fading quite a lot. And this is built into the software and it's wonderful in most cases, but when you're trying to develop vectors for modeling or tracing or whatever you're gonna do, um, you need to actually be able to see your bitmap. So if I click that and right click on it, you'll see that I can go to my object properties. Now, Rebecca showed this earlier today and so did Michael yesterday. So this is a tried and true method to make this stuff all kind of work. I'm gonna turn off our fading all the way and we're gonna click close. The next thing we're going to do is bring in our side view. So we're going to go ahead and import that in. Find our side picture here, this little guy. And he again is going to be used to help us to find those shapes as we model them. And there we go. He looks great right there. I'm not going to change his fade. I want him to fade when I'm not, when I don't have him selected. He's just there for reference and won't distract me too much. 
So if we take a look at our layers manager now, you're gonna see that we have two layers. As soon as we brought in a bitmap, Aspire made us a bitmap layer to start with. That's great. Right now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna lock that. I don't want those bitmaps to move by mistake if I happen to click them. And then I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna fix one more thing. If I start drawing vectors on top of my gorilla that are black, I'm never gonna see them. So I don't wanna choose black, green, or brown. That's gonna be terrible. I won't be able to tell what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and change the color of that layer to blue. And we're just gonna go ahead and off click that and you'll see that the, the box is now blue, okay? That's that. Now, let me go ahead and we're gonna move on to one of my highly, highly technical files to show you how to create the shapes that you're gonna need in order to create the gorilla that we're gonna see here. So I'm just gonna flip over to this. Like I said, highly technical. There's only three circles on there, but they're gonna give you all that you need. I'm serious, With it, you know, within reason, there's one or two things you're gonna to need to know in the software, but to get you to the point where you can start to model that gorilla. So let's go ahead and tile our view. We're gonna move our plane up there. And just for fun, because I told you I was gonna do this earlier, let's go ahead and change this from Canadian maple to a solid color. And we're gonna use tan like I had mentioned. And we'll click okay. There we are. Okay, so move that out of the way so you can see it all right. And we're gonna grab this vector and we're gonna to go to our modeling tab. We're gonna use very few of these tools, by the way. So you don't need to know them all, but you just need to know the ones that are important. So we're gonna go ahead and click create a shape. Now in version 10.5, the developers have given us some really nice new tools here to work with, a nice new shape profile. So we've got this concave shape, we've got this smooth shape that we can work with now. And then we also have this blend to inner vectors, which is um, really nice. And we're gonna use that in a minute. But for right now, we're just gonna use a dome shape. We're gonna choose an angle. Somewhere around there is fine. And you'll see that in our 3D view, it's updated. We're gonna turn off our limit height and now you can see this shape. Now, that is a perfect dome, lovely. I love it a lot, it's great. Except for when it comes to machining that, if it's a real low relief, then your tool is gonna to come up on the edge of that and you're actually not gonna be, be able to hardly notice the outside rim of that. So there's a couple things we can do for that, is we can go ahead and add in a bit of base height if we would like. So we can add in like 0.2 of a base height and you'll see that it raises it up, but that's not very pretty, is it? Now, if you're using a bullnose end mill, you're automatically gonna smooth that anyway, but if you're not gonna, that's gonna look pretty, pretty crummy. So let's take that out of there and let's use this technique instead. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and do limit height. So if we select that, you'll see what happens. That shape is building up at the proper angle that we selected and then flattens off. So if we change our angle just a little bit, you'll see that that gets more and more sort of pronounced then that's great. Now our tool can come along, bump up, and do its top. Now the top of this is flat. That's not really what we want to get away with. We'd like to have that little bump and then a nice little round dome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a compound component. That's my name, not Vectrix. I just needed something to describe it with. So we're gonna call it a compound component. So we're gonna go ahead and start a new component. We're gonna keep that one that's there. We're gonna choose that same vector again. We're gonna make it a dome. We're gonna say no limit. And we are gonna go ahead and just make that a little bit less. And then you'll see in the 3D view, now we have a that raised edge and then a nice little dome on the top. Now that is a nice looking shape and you can squish that down quite low and still have that dome going on and it looks really, really nice. Anyway, top tip for you there, okay? So let's close that down. And now we're going to take those two components and we're gonna make them into one component. So we're gonna bake those together. Oh, that's the wrong button, let's undo that. We're gonna grab those two components and we're gonna bake it together. And there we have, we made one component. And now let's have a look at some of the other options that we have once we have a component. We can bring up our component properties and we can use tilt and fade or fade and tilt. Now you've probably seen me use these before. These are really important to get your head wrapped around but they're not very complicated so it should be pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and try fade first. So I'm gonna set my two anchor points. So it's gonna fade my component between two, two points. So I'm gonna drop my first point in here, my second point there, and you'll see in the 3D view, it's now been faded from high on this end down to the other end. And by default, we get a 50% fade. Let's make that 100, and you're really gonna be able to see the difference. 
Okay, so fade is important. But I faded across that whole object. Let's talk about what I also call selective fading, which I'm only gonna fade halfway across that. So if I reset my two anchor points, one here and one in the middle, you'll see what happens in the 3D view. Now I get it fading down to nothing here. There's a little crease there. You can just, just kind of make out. And this is all flat. So I can kind of keep only part of the object that I want by fading up to the area where I want it to be. And this is great when you're trying to put different objects into a scene and so on. It's great to be able to fade part of them all the way totally by using this. Okay, so let's turn off fade and let's talk about tilt. Tilt works exactly the same way. We're gonna select tilt. We're gonna drop in two anchor points but we're gonna add a wedge of material underneath that part from point A to point B, or from the first point to the second point. In this case, we're gonna use degrees. So let's make it five degrees, and you'll see instantly what happens in the 3D view. We get a nice wedge. Again, an important shape to know how to make, but it's pretty easy to do. That's a positive tilt. Let's talk about negative tilt, okay? If I put that as a negative number in there, and then press spacebar after the number, you see what happens is that drops below the modeling plane, leaving only part of that above the modeling plane. And that piece that's above the modeling plane, in a lot of cases, is really hard to model and sometimes comes in really handy. So let me show you how to get that. So if we close this down, now we're going to use replace below zero. So we're going to select that and we're simply going to take a value of zero, so anything below zero, so anything below the modeling plane, we're gonna replace with transparency, nothing's gonna be there. And we are gonna lower the component by zero, so it's not really gonna go anywhere, it's just gonna crop the bottom off. We hit apply, and there we have, if we close this down, a very hard shape to make, like that, okay? Perfect, another top tip, negative tilt, it's great. Okay, so now let's have a look at these other two circles over here. So let's just go ahead back into our create shape form. And we're gonna talk about blend to inner vector and we're gonna look at these shapes here. So let's select these two vectors, we'll shift select them, outside one, inside one. We're gonna use our dome. And then we are going to make sure that we have this set to 0.5 an inch and we'll click apply. And in the 3D view, you're gonna see this shape happen. Now, Edward yesterday, in, this, in our second presentation of the day, he shows you how to, to roughly model a face from a side profile that most people can do without any trouble at all. He used that technique and it works out really well. Now you could do this with a two rail sweep if you wanted to, but why? Why do that nowadays when you've got these brand new tools built in here? This blend to inner vector is perfect. And then having access to these extra profile shapes is wonderful. We can do this. Nice shape like that. We can use this concave shape which looks really good. Or we can go ahead and use this smooth one. Now, if we look really closely and you stretch your imagination just a little teeny bit, that looks like a gorilla's nose. It does, doesn't it? Well, it does. I'll show you in a sec. Okay, so let's go back over now. You have know all of my tips and tricks and we're gonna jump back into the gorilla again. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom in on this very serious looking gorilla. And I'm gonna show you how to create the nose, okay? I'm just gonna grab a little glass of water here, sorry. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna drop in a few curves here. And we're gonna use the technique that Rebecca showed you earlier today, which is new to the drawing tool. I can slick, sorry, I can drop down my first node, holding in my mouse button to drop in the second one, and it'll turn right to a bezier. So I can just kind of go along here. And with a little bit of practice, Trust me, because it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Um, like that. And we're gonna press spacebar, and we're gonna continue to draw now. So we have the outside of the nose, and now we're gonna go ahead and draw the top of the nose, okay? That's pretty simple to do. Just gonna do this. Okay, it's just a matter of practicing a little bit of drawing. And off you go. Okay, that looks pretty good there. We'll press spacebar and then we're going to do inside of his nostril here. I don't know why, but this one seems to go much smoother for me than the others. And at the end, I'm just going to press tab and close that off and that's great. We're going to press escape to get out of the drawing form and then I'm going to go ahead and 
while I have my control key down on my keyboard, I'm just going to size this down a little bit to create a copy of that, and I'm going to put it up there in his nose. That's great. Now I am going to fix one thing here that's going to bother me, so I'm just going to zip in here, just make that a little more round at the top, like that. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and turn off the gorilla. Don't want to see him anymore. And now we have the vectors to create our nose. Oh, there's a little mistake down here. Let's go into node mode again. Just pull that over there, put it there. That's great. Perfect. Okay. Now let's go ahead and select those. We're gonna we're gonna just flip those over to the right. So we're gonna go ahead and flip them to the right. We're gonna make a copy. There we are, we'll close those down. I'm gonna select these two outside vectors. We're gonna go ahead and join those with the smooth curve. I'm gonna click it again so it closes it off. Same with this one, so it's just clicking twice. Click, click. And there we've got that perfect. So that's all that we need to create this. Let's bring up our 3D view so I can prove it to you. Okay, so let's grab this outside vector, inside vector. We're gonna to go to our create shape tool here and we are going to use that shape, perfect. We're gonna to blend to our inner vector. We'll go with a half inch. And we're gonna add that and we'll click apply. And there we have it. That's the start of a gorilla nose. Let's start a new component. Let's just grab this inside shape here now and let's go ahead and make a compound component. Like I said before, we're gonna add this on top of the other. We're gonna make this no limit. We're gonna, that's 25%, that's perfect. We'll just click apply and see what that looks like. Yeah, that's great. Start a new component. Let's go with the inside of the nose, the nostrils. We're gonna select those two. Use the same feature again, blend to inner vector. We're gonna make this three, five instead. We don't want it to go right down to the zero plane because we're gonna subtract that out of there. We hit apply and that's great. We're gonna start a new component. Shift, select those two, hit apply and we'll close that down. And there we have it, maximize this. And if we look at our gorilla here, you can see that we have the starting of a nose. Okay, and that didn't take much to do in the end. All you need to do is have some decent vectors drawn. So that's my next point is that I personally feel that spending some time developing your vectors is gonna save you a lot of trouble when it comes to 3D modeling without a doubt. You're, in my case, I probably put 70 to 80% of my time into creating good vectors and then start creating my shapes from those because I know I have good solid vectors to work from, okay? So in saying that, after some work, I came up with this file. Okay, now let's just talk quickly about the warning that comes up in here. There are no, obviously, any tool paths here. What this is more pertaining to is the terms of use of this actual file. So read it over, make sure you understand it, and then you can go ahead and click OK. So this is the end result of all of my vectors that I drew. But you can see that there's the nose vectors. Now I may have taken a little more time to draw those up, which is what I did. I made this gorilla very symmetrical, so he doesn't have, like in our original picture, if you know, if you remember, he was kind of turned slightly. This is actually straight on, straight on. And I've eliminated some of the details. I didn't need them. And this is what we have. Now, if we look up here under our layer manager, you're going to see I've got some layers set up. So let's go ahead and hide this working one and look at the head. So I moved all of my vectors that I needed to create the models for my head to one layer. There's some extra ones in there, his big radar ears there. Well, those are those those circles are used to actually cut out a piece of the side of his head so I can put his ears in there. That's what they're for, so they're just negative shapes. Um, and then I have, of course, his chest and arms put on their own layer, which is great. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the modeling tab. In the modeling tab, there's all kinds of stuff here. And I'm going to show you, and you're going to be able to look at these shapes. And from what I just showed you, you should be able to dissect how I came up with them. So let's bring up our view here, and we're going to put that up there for us. Okay. And I'm, we're going to start out with the mouth and chin. Okay. Now you'll notice that I do, when I model, I name my um, levels, okay? I don't particularly name the stuff that's inside the level. Sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. There's a combination here just because I wanted you to be able to know what I was referring to. So let's open up his bottom lip. You know, by looking at, at that, you know exactly what I did there. Limited height dome with a fade. That's it, okay? Nothing fancy. We've got this, the part that sits on top of that is just a regular old dome. There's nothing fancy there. 
His lower lip is limited height fade, gives us a nice little starting edge. And then his lower lip on the top, it's just a dome. We've got his, this I call, this is kind of just pushes up his snout a little bit, so it's just a limited height dome with a bit of a tilt on it. Then we have this piece here. Don't be confused by these whole, the nostrils that are kind of cut out in this. I had to do that because in the end, once you kind of put this all together, the nostrils were so deep that you could see a snout through it. So, yeah, so I needed to get rid of that. So I just selected the vector here and then the component. And I used this tool right here, which was clear outside or clear inside of selected area. Okay, I just got rid of that. And that way everything works together fine. And then we have another component that sits with that one right there. So now here's the magic. You ready? We're, gonna go, we're just going to add these up one at a time. This is my manual animation going on here. And there you have it. Okay, that's part of it. The next part, we're going to have a look at his nose. So to start out with, you saw me make this a minute ago. Okay, we're going to add to that a little bit of a bump. We're going to add to that the two nostrils. And then if we add the mouth and chin and working or merge it in, then this is what you get. We're off to a pretty good start, I think. Okay, let's hide those. And we have his head here next, okay, which is the same sort of thing. You will notice that there's a bit of a hard edge here. That's because I had to copy the head shape and then remove out the center of his face so that I could make sure that his, when I add on his snout, it actually rides up his face the proper way. One of the side effects of this is that I get at the top of my finished model, you're going to see a raised edge right here. That was okay because when I was going to sculpt it out, so I wasn't too worried about that. You can or cannot, you can if you want to or not, like I did, fix that right now. I'm not going to bother to fix it. So you'll see in the end that when we add this all together, you get this going on. This looks really good. We're going to add in the eyes. The eyes are on their own independent um, level for a reason. I don't want to sculpt those. I want them to be on their own because I want to keep that definition in there. I'm going to add the back of the head. I'm not going to bother to walk through all of these components because you can do that on your own. The head and chin. Okay, that's his goatee thing there. The flat back to his head to kind of raise it up through the zero plane because you can see those ears that I made, those little round dishes were below the zero plane. And then we have his ears that I've actually modeled flat and then tilted into place. So they're tilted in there so they fit right. And then I have the body. So let's bring that around like this. And now the interesting thing about the body is I've had, I've amended the, this level here with the name clip at the end. That's because there's an extra vector here that's called crop vector. And I've used that as a um, as part of my level. If you right click on that, I can use a clipping vector to clip everything that's on that level. So it's gonna show only what's inside that vector. Everything outside of that will be clipped away virtually. It's just pretend because you can see that those components still exist inside of the actual model. So if I have any problems, I can still go back and fix those, which is great. So that's that. Now, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to show you my tried and true way of figuring out whether or not you're on the right track when you get to this point in your modeling before you do any sculpting. So let's just bring up our 3D view, the full screen, move it off to the side. Okay, I'm going to bring back up our gorilla. There he is right there. And then what I'm going to do in my component tree, I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert a new level. I'm not going to change the name of the level. It doesn't matter. It's just there right now. Then I'm going to create a component from what I can see in the 3D view or our composite model. So I'll click that. And what you're going to see is that composite model is here. So it's a solid model, but it's being added to everything else. So it gets doubled up. So we're going to go ahead and right click on this level and go down to show only this. So we're only going to see that and everything else is fine. Now what we're going to do is with that selected, we're going to smooth the heck out of it. And that will sort of simulate what we might end up having if we wanted to. And that looks pretty good. Right away, you can see that it's coming, you know, it's starting to look more like that gorilla all the time, which is great, or a simulation of that gorilla or something similar, maybe his brother, cousin, twin brother, maybe, I don't know. Um, anyway, it looks pretty good. Now at this point, you could stop, with the exception of the way his shoulders are, but you could stop here and you could make a, a chocolate mold, you can make a candy mold, you can make a drawer pull, you could uh, do all kinds of things with this. As it is right now, there's nothing wrong with this model, okay? 
but we can take it a bit farther and I can show you how to sculpt some more detail into this. But as you can see, I got it close enough just with my components that I'm pretty happy with it. So let's close this down, select that, and we're gonna delete that out of there. We don't need that anymore. And we're gonna selectively choose some layers here. We're gonna choose his chin, his nose, his head, not his eyes, the back of his head, the chin hair, and the flat plane on his head, like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a component from what I see in the 3D view. Right click on that again, and we're gonna say show only this. And this is the part we're gonna sculpt. Now note, I left out his eyes because I don't wanna mess up the eyes. I want them to be nice and crisp and, and like the detail needs to be there. I didn't add in his ears because I'm gonna do that later because there's some sculpting that I was worried about I couldn't be able to do or I'd end up messing them up here. So I saved those for later. Let's zoom in a little bit and let's just go ahead now and dive into sculpting. Let's choose the sculpting tool. And this is where I'm going to jump over to my tablet with my stylus. I'm also going to use my mouse because I have a really wonky way of doing this. Um, but it's just, it's just the way I do it. Um, I'm going to use this to zoom with and my stylus to sculpt with, I guess. Ah, so here we go. So smooth, smudge we're going to use. We're going to deposit. We may or may not use remove. But here, right here are the important things I want you to really pay attention to. And Michael Tyler mentioned these before is that normal raise and lower the modes of this. These are invaluable to understand and to try them out and see what results you get so you can get a really good sense of what these are gonna do when you use them, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna smooth a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And we are gonna smooth his nose really easily, not too much smooth. We're gonna set the diameter pretty good and the strength up a little bit there and we're just going to roll around his nose here just smooth that in and now you've got the the, re the reference of the gorilla right there you can see it i can't see that it's right in front i can see it but I, I usually look in front of me so there's a reference here in front of me of the gorilla so i'm just going to go ahead and smooth that out and you can see how those shapes are starting to work together nicely let's look at the middle of his nose so i'm going to smudge it's the first time i want to use this lower only so i'm going to make that little divot in his nose you can see there's a little bit of a divot in his nose We'll make this kind of small. I'm gonna go with lower only. And what's gonna happen when I move my stylus back and forth or my mouse over top of that part of his nose, because I have it set to lower only, it's actually going to move pixels down and not move them out. It's not gonna move them around on me. So you watch what happens. I'm gonna go back and forth. And there we have that divot of his nose. Pretty easy to do. Let's go back to my smoothing again. Just do a little bit of smoothing in there just to kind of get rid of that. That looks really great. Perfect around there. Wonderful. Now on the sides of his nostrils, they kind of flare out a little bit. So let's do a little bit more smudging here. Make it a little bit smaller. That's fine. We're going to lower only. That's great. And we're just going to put that in there, which is nice. And that there looks really good. I think that's perfect. It's coming together. Now let's talk about the bridge of his nose. Again, using smudge, we're up that diameter a little bit. That's good. We're going to raise only there. I don't mind if it runs in because I'm raising only. I can run into his upper brow and nothing's going to happen. It's not going to lower anything in that brow, okay? So if I go ahead and just kind of move that out a little bit. Now, what's lovely about this gorilla is he's a gorilla, so he's not perfect. And he's probably been in a few fights. So I don't mind if this doesn't look perfect. Smooth that down really well. And smooth around there. We're going to go ahead and smudge that again. I'm going to smudge a little bit of this down there from there. Gonna think about his eyebrows because I'm up here. We're gonna go ahead and smudge some of that. There, he's got a very serious look on his face. I like the look on this gorilla's face. Looks like he has something to say or he's thinking about something. That looks really good. Let's smooth that out a little bit up here again. Looks really great. And now we're gonna go ahead and um, remove some of this up here and make a very low diameter. And so what happens when we created this shape, we end up getting these little puckers in there. Those puckers don't quite line up right. So we're going to go ahead and reestablish those in there by doing this sort of thing. And that way we can give him that, again, that worried sort of perplexed look he's got going on there. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. That's really great. His nose is good. Okay, let's add some detail to the top of his nose. So we're going to deposit some material on there. I'm not quite sure what that's going to give me, so let's just go ahead and do that. There's some bumps on his nose. Like that, and I think, 
As you move down his nose, they kind of come together. There's one like that. Yeah, that's really good. Now let's look at his eyes. Now you can spend lots of time on sculpting. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm just flying through this. So when you see my final thing, I'll also show you the steps I got to get there. So you'll see how, how it changes. So that's great. That's good. So now let's look around his eye. I'm going to smooth that out first. Okay, we're going to smooth that around his eye a little bit. We don't want those hard edges that are there. Maybe we'll make our brush a little bit bigger, a little more strength. I'll just kind of go around there. Oh, sorry, I hit the button on my uh, my stylus there. That's great. Kind of smooth that there. We're going to smooth out those hard edges. Smooth around the top of his head. Smooth all that out. Smoothing is it your friend, by the way. Okay, now what we're going to do is look at those eyes. So we're going to deposit some tiny beads of material over top of his eyes. And my technique for this is to ride on that edge right around there, okay? So we're going to ride on that edge and we're going to add in some material. It's going to be a raised sort of bit there. Okay, that's good. And we're going to go underneath a little. And do the same over here. Overshoot a bit. That's good. We're going to turn up our strength just a little bit because now we're going to go ahead and put some of these lines in underneath his eyes. Looks like he didn't have a very good sleep last night. And there we go. I just got to put those in there. With a little bit of smudging and smoothing, we can make those look a little bit better, but I'm not going to do that. You know where I'm going with this. You can kind of work those in. Okay, and then what we're going to do is worry about this, this part right here of his face. We're going to go ahead and remove some material. We're going to make it a substantial size brush like that. And we're just going to remove some material there. Looks great. Some more there. A third up there. That looks pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with that. If I hold down, if I zoom out a little bit, he's coming together. I could have spent a little more time fixing those. Sorry, they're a bit messy. But anyway, you, you get the idea. And now let's talk about the rest of his mouth. So we're quickly going to run over a little bit of a smooth. Turn the diameter up. Oh, sorry. I'm going to undo those. Lovely undo. I'm going to smooth that. Sorry. Had the remove set. Okay, we're just going to just kind of go over that nice and light. Okay, and then I'm going to smooth the heck out of these here. Smooth those right off. We don't want those. Also, I'm going to smooth where his goatee is because I'm going to do something with that in a sec. Right back to there. Looks really good. Okay, so to, to, to model hair or to sculpt hair, this is my technique. Again, if I wasn't doing this live, I'd be taking a little bit more time for it. But we're going to deposit some material. We're going to start out with a, a fairly big diameter tool and lots of strength. And we're going to draw in some hair the direction that you see it going, okay? Like this. That's a start. So far so good. Then we're going to turn down the diameter, turn up the strength, and we're going to make smaller hair on top of that. And we're just going to work through that a bunch of times. And at some point you may decide that you want to remove some material from it, which is always a great technique. And we can do that or we can smudge if we want to from the outside edge here, we can kind of give it some more, lower only, sorry. We can just kind of push that in there and give it more of a, a goatee kind of shape. Okay, so there we have it. So, again, I am not going to pretend that this, uh, what I sculpted happened in five minutes. It took probably an hour or so to do it all, or just his head. But I am going to show you the results of that, okay? So let's go ahead and check out a new file. And that is going to be right here at the end. Again, same deal. Oh, we can turn off our friend here. Don't need that right now. Um, is make sure you read this. Again, the first bit isn't so important. It's the bit at the bottom, the terms of service. So we'll click OK. And let's go to our 3D view. Full 3D view. Slide that out of the way. Put it over here to the side. And actually, we will bring back our gorilla. And we'll look at our modeling tab. And you'll see we have some components set up here. There's some main components that I've put together to make the full head, and then I've done a body sculpt, and then we have the actual finished thing. So let's, let, let's look through that. There is the head. Now you just saw me go through that. 
This is all pretty easy. I removed bits from here, added in some stuff here, worked on the bridge of his nose a little bit more. All of this eyebrow is all done right in the sculpting. It's not too difficult to see that I've done that and how I've done that. Add in our eyes. Again, I didn't sculpt those, didn't smooth them. They're nice and crisp. They look really good in there. That's great. We've got his ears. I'm going to pop those back on again. And like I said, I put that all together into one thing. And then I did some more sculpting on that. And so there we have him sculpted in his ears. Fix this up here because I'd forgotten that when I did my vector. So I had to fix that there. That all looks good. You see now he has hair on his goatee. Everything looks great. Let's go ahead and hide this for a second. Let's put it in his body. You saw where I started with, the shapes that I started with. I just sculpted them, smoothed them, moved some material out of the way. Worked on it probably for 45 minutes, I bet you, in the end, but it's all worked out really quite nicely in the end. Putting those all together, those two pieces together, you can see that's what we get. And then the end product is right here. I'll right click on this and we're gonna show only this. And you can see that's the end gorilla in the end. Now I'm serious, we only use those three or four different shape ideas to come up with the basic shapes for this, a little bit of sculpting, and off you go. Again, I didn't put a ton of detail in here because I knew the end result. So what I have in there I thought was enough to keep, to keep it happy, make it look nice in the end, and I wouldn't blow it out in the end when we were trying to finish it. Now you have all the layers here in here that you can look at at your leisure if you'd like to, assuming that you go ahead and purchase the extras pack. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at the sculpting a little bit more in detail so you can see how it built up. So here we have sculpt number one. That's the first picture I took. The second picture, the third picture, the fourth picture, the fifth picture. And you can see how it all kind of happens in the end. Now I'm just going to do one more thing. I'm going to go back to the software for a second because I for forgot to point out something really important. I think I have a few seconds to do it. As I was working through my sculpting of the different components, I made use of our save, incremental save. So what that does is it takes your original file name and saves off a copy of that file where you are with an underscore one or two or three or however how many times you've used this feature so that you can save your sculpting or your project as you move along, especially if when you're doing something like this where you might look at your one, one day's worth of sculpting and go, that's perfect, then move ahead the next couple of days and you're sculpting again, you go, oh shoot, I wish I could go back to that file before. Well, you've got this incremental save here that you can use to help you out with that. So anyway, I wanted to point that out to you because I'd forgotten, sorry about that. Okay, so let's talk for a second. In the extras pack that you can, of course, purchase to go along with this user group meeting is um, three files. You're gonna get my vectors that I created. You're going to get the second file, which has all of the actual unsculpted components in there, all the bits and pieces that I made so you can kind of dissect what I did and how I got there. And then you're going to get the third file, which is the finish sculpt in the end. So I highly, highly, highly um, recommend that if you are new to sculpting or if you want to try it out or you want to, you know, see how, how well your sculpting skills stack up to somebody like me, then go in there and try it and give it a shot. Work through those files, play with them. You've got nothing to lose, really. And, you know, in the end, you might come up with something really better. And if you do, I hope you share it with me because I want to see it in the end. Okay, that'd be fantastic. So that's it for now from me. So up next is going to be Edward Powell. He's going to talk to you about um, making a, using V carving and some text to create some really cool picture ideas. So please stick around for that. Now, tomorrow... This is kind of exciting. We're going to take the gorilla a little bit farther. And we've named the, gear, the, the gorilla Gary. And we're going to take him, and I'm actually going to show you how to slice him up, create the cut files for it, cut him out, and reassemble him again, and put him back together again and paint him. So that's kind of exciting. So tomorrow at noon, um, British summertime, I'll be here showing you that. So I hope that you come along and see that. Well, anyway, I'll leave you there for today. But I hope that you're having fun. I hope that you're still making great stuff. And, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. I've got a minute. Thanks to everybody who's posted their stuff in the showcase. There's some pretty spectacular stuff. If you haven't done it yet, take a second and go in and post something that you're really proud of because there's some stuff in there that's really cool. Okay? Anyway, be safe, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay,